Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I am Minister Jason and Wyatt Sneed, and I want to welcome you, yes, you, to Great Ecclesia's Virtual Experience, where we bring to you the encouraging, uplifting, and empowering Word of God. And whose builder and founder is the late, great Bishop Richard Sneed Sr. Today, or this whole month, is a special month because we pay tribute to our famous leader who have put blood, sweat, and tears into this ministry. And so we salute my father and uh, we thank him for his hard work that he did and his dedication to serving God's people, taking care of God's people and feeding God's people. So we pray and we continue to lift up that the vision still lives on. The vision still lives on. So, without further ado, make sure you're washing your hands, make sure you're wearing your mask, optional, and make sure you're practicing social distancing so that you keep you and your family hurt, uh, safe from hurt, harm, and danger. So, without further ado, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's go. Praise the Lord, everyone. Please join me for a moment of prayer with all heads bowed. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, gracious Father, for your goodness and for your mercy, O oh Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this time we have together of fellowship, Lord God, hallelujah, of hearing your word, Lord God. Lord, bless each and every one, Lord God, that is viewing this telecast, Lord God, every one, Lord God, hallelujah. O oh Lord, who have ears, let them hear, Lord God, what the Spirit says, hallelujah. Lord God, open up every heart and every mind to receive your words of life, Lord God, your words that empower us, your words that encourage us, your words that strengthen us, Lord God, and help us to be all that we could be, Lord God. Bless each and every one, Lord God. Bless, O oh Lord God, hallelujah, Lord, your manservant, as he come forth to preach your word on today, O oh Lord God. Bless each and every one. Lord God, bless Greater Ecclesia Temple and all the families, Lord God. Lift up them that are struggling, Lord God, them that are feeling, Lord, disheartened, Lord God. Strengthen, bless, and deliver. In Jesus' name we pray and say, Amen. You are the bread of heaven. You are the living word. And that's why we bless your name today. God with us, Emmanuel. We just glorify your name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing together. Bread of heaven. Sit down from the glory. Sit down from the glory. Many things you were Many on things. earth, a holy king, a carpenter. carpenter. You are the living word. You are the living word. Bread of heaven, heaven. sent down from the Lord. Many things you were. Whoa. 
Praise the Lord, everyone. Our scripture reading from, for today comes from Psalm 24, and it reads this wise. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He whose who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. May the Lord add a blessing upon the reading of his holy word. Say it again. 
They stumble being disobedient to the word which they were given. You may eat all of the trees in the garden, but of the one that's in the midst of the garden, you shall not eat. God knows just exactly the way you should live, and he gives us instructions. He tells us what is evil. He tells us what we should um, more or less uh, separate ourselves from. He tells us. And we see here, he tells us, and even Apostle Peter now makes a statement walking in the lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. Now, to now make that much plainer, um, we, we need to go to the writings of Apostle Paul found in Galatians. Flip over with me to the book of Galatians. Uh, I think it's around chapter 4. Chapter 5, sorry. Chapter 5. Um, Let's go. 
God empowered my spirit? Have I released this corruptible way that was handed to me from Adam and Eve? I noticed it. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish, but if you are led by the Spirit, that's God's Spirit, you are not under the law. He placed the law. These are things now that are more or less you should know. He's assuming that you understand what he's saying to you. He's assuming that you understood or that you understand that Moses received the Ten Commandments and the laws of God on Mount Moriah and brought them down to the people. And they couldn't even live by them because they couldn't walk in the Spirit of God at that time. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are, ooh, adultery. Oh, we have uh, uh, adultery and fornication, Uncleanness, lewdness, adultery, fornication, lewdness. What's happening to the world today? What's happening to the young people today? The young people now are in, engaged in sports sex. And they had something on television where a man now uh, had his uh, baby's mama's. How many did he have? Five? Did you all see that? Yeah. They had to take him off the air because they said, this shouldn't be. Ain't nowhere in the world. Yes. We should now talk about a man impregnating five women. And now here it is, uh, mama, this is my dad, this is my baby's dad. <laughs> and so you see here, the scriptures are playing out. Lewdness. Fornication, sports sex, and the children are seeing this, and that's the reason why families are now being torn apart, and there's confusion all day long and every day, and all through the year, because the babies don't know who their daddies are. Can I get an amen in here? Wave your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so we see that now the works of the flesh, and we see adultery, fornication, cleanness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, um, uh, her heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, Rivalry and the like of which I tell you beforehand, and this is the Apostle Paul. Just as I also told you in time past that those who practice adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, adultery, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, such thing would not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruits of God's Spirit is, and the mind of Jesus Christ is, because remember, let this mind be in you that was also in Jesus. You can't get there without the Spirit of God. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. Notice this. The fruits of the Spirit is Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Help us in it, Jesus. Against such, there is no law. Against such, Moses' law does not exist for us. Uh, 
and praise the Lord. And those who are Christ have crucified what? Flesh with what? His passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in God's Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. And so we see, here it is now. We see that, and let's look back, let's go back. Um, to Peter. Let's go back. And we see here. Let's get an understanding. For Christ also suffered once for sin, sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Life now is coming to 
to understand what's required of us when it comes to our Savior. Amen. When it comes to our Master, our Creator, the one now that had concern, that was concerned about us, not being destroyed, but being saved. That's what he said. That which is born of the flesh, now we see the corruptible way he's going to speak about is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit of God, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, he speaks from the standpoint of God, Spirit, then he goes to the lowercase, <coughs> which is us. Is Spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must, not maybe, not might, not if you just want to. It's emphatic, you must be what? Born, Born again. The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from where it goes. So is everyone. Now, wait, wait. Speaking in tongues is just a gift. What, what, what are you talking about? Speaking in tongues is just a gift. Well, I tell you what, if you don't have that gift, <laughs> it's for sure your spirit has not been transformed. It's for sure you have not come into the presence of God. It's not based on how you figure and how you think. It's based on what the Word of God says. Amen. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. So is everyone who is born of God's Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can, how can these things be? And this is the question. It's a gift. And people say, it's a gift. Uh, how can it be? I don't understand it. No, you don't understand it. You need to come someplace where you can understand it and where Amen. people are receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. How can this, these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you a teacher? Are you a professor? Are you now teaching the scriptures? Do you really understand it? Oh, help us in the Lord. And do not know these things, Jesus, most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know, thank God I'm speaking what I know. We speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our words. If you have, if I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, he speaks in behalf of himself, who is in heaven. And Moses, and as Moses, and he talks now, he's making reference to what when he talks here. As Moses lifted up the serpent, in the wilderness. Oh, Lord, he's going back to way back into time with Moses now lifted up the serpent in the wilderness and he lifted it up and said, look on it because they were being bitten by serpents. And if you look and see it, you'll be delivered. And they were. You got to understand no one has ascended. Let's go down. And Moses lifted, verse 14, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so much the Son of Man be lifted up. I got to be lifted up. They're going to nail me to the cross. This has got to be done for the sins of the world and for mankind to be now forgiven. And so you start to see the importance of this. 
This is just not something that's handed to us and for us more or less to give our own interpretation of it. This is real. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you have not been baptized in the name Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, raised and raised up out of that water, you haven't got it. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not what? Perish. Perish, should not die, should not die of starvation, but have what? Eternal life. Eternal life. I'm giving you eternal life. It's yours. You want it? It's yours. You make that decision. Eternal life is yours. What do you say? Do you want it? Do you feel that it's necessary? Do you want to continue on in your lewd and uh, fornicated way? Or do you want to be born again? That the Lord now will deliver you from all of the sin and shame that comes with living with God. That whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, what? Should perish, but have everlasting. Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. When God now seen that man now had fallen from grace and seen that humanity needed a savior, it was from this point now that we find that God now started the plan. Here it is now. Thousands of years has passed away. And here it is. Now his son appears. But you got to understand something. You got to understand this one thing. That Jesus now, um, when he was born, came into this world, the Holy Spirit was shallowed Mary, and Jesus was the incorruptible seed. When he came into his being, when he came to the place now where he understood and no longer did the angels have to protect him and instruct his parents where to go but it came to the point now when he became of age, when he got become of age in Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be what? Baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And you are coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now. For thus it is written, or for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill what? All Righteousness, I am the example. I am the forerunner. Baptize me so that now when my people come along and have need of the filth being washed away in the pool, they will know I did it first. And so then he allowed him, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, Spirit of God, to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending down, descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. He was now filled with the Holy Spirit. 
This was fulfilling all righteousness. And he was the example for us now. Not to say, I don't want to be born again. I don't want to, you see, I don't feel that that's right. And this is the reason why. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And notice this, notice this. And I want you to notice the difference here now. Holy Spirit got something for him to do. He says, then Jesus said, I was led up by the Spirit of God into where? The wilderness. To be what? Tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, Think it not strange when one receives a baptism of the Holy Spirit that you're not going to be tested. We all are tested. Yes. But because of the power and the might of God within our lives, we overcome. Yes. And that's what God wants us to know. Rely on me, I'll take you through hell. Yes. And you'll find that, what does the psalmist say? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. Listen at this now. He leads me into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Yeah, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because why? God is with me. Can I get an amen in here? Yes. You got to understand the way God works. And when you don't understand how God works within our lives, you become confused about it. I don't want to, I don't think that's right. Hallelujah. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my, so sit down son, I got this one. You just sit down and go ahead on and eat. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. I'm going to give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and to overcome all of your enemies. Yes. That's where God's Spirit in us helps us to overcome and to become all that God wants us to be. But you got to hear this now. And some people now make adjustments. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my name. He anoints my head with oil. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And where? I will what? Dwell. Well, in the house of the Lord. How long? Oh. Forever. And so it is. We make a selection as to what we're going to do when it comes to coming to the house of God. And we take our time about doing it. When things now are in order, the saints of God should be in order because you might hear something or something might be said before you get here that could deliver your life. Jesus. And I give an amen in here. And so we find here. Brothers and sisters, and uh, I have gotten off, but you'll find that Peter has said things that we should know. He just assumed that we would know these things. And we should. If they're true, when you read it, you should be conscious of it. Now, notice this. Where did the Spirit lead him? In the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days, let's bring it on down now. I want to show you what the Spirit of God can do. I ain't going to eat for 40 days. I'm going to show you what the Spirit of God can do. 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards, he got home. 
It wasn't time to eat. <laughs> this is what he's telling us. Now when he, the tempter came to him after the 40 days and knew that he was, should have been weak, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become, I know where you are. And so now all of the fiery trials and tests that come upon us, the devil know exactly where you are because he watches you. Not, not, my, not maybe him, but you'll find that the horde of the third of heaven are angels that came down with him. They're watching us. They're assigned to certain cities. Lord, help us in Detroit. Amen. Help us in Detroit. But he answered and said to him, It is written, Man, what? Shall not live what? By a big plate of beef, potatoes, and those uh, um, rolls that they serve in some of these restaurants. <laughs> But by every word, but by what? Every, every word. word? Just a few words? Every huh? word. You mean every tell me we got to learn all this? We got to know all of this? By every word that what? Do we know it? We got a whole lot to do, don't we? Got a whole lot to do. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, I just want to, I'm going to, you can finish reading that in your leisure. I have to move on. And I'm going to move now to the point to show you what Jesus received and what you can receive as a believer. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Finally, my brother. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the Now he's telling you right there, you won't be tested. But he's telling you the way that you can overcome. You ain't going to overcome doing our, our talking all kinds of stuff. You ain't gonna overcome by not being half, by just being half-hearted about serving God. That's how come a lot of us are not blessed like we should be because we are half-hearted. We're not totally sold into this way. There are things that we now have back on the shelf. Every now when we need, we go to the shelf and say, "Well, I just need you right now, Lord, forgive me." What's that you got in your hand? Ooh. What's that flat uh, bottle of stuff that you got there? Oh, don't worry about it. Because every now and then you have to take one. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, brother. Wait a minute, brother. Is the Spirit of God in you? It's all right. I won't come out for money. Oh, Jesus. It's all right. <laughs> Notice this. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Now he's coming right down to we're not wrestling with our brother. We're not rational with that, that woman. We're not rational with our sister. We're not rational with somebody on the, on the street. But get it right. You're rationing with the devil. Can I get an amen in here? Ah. Uh, uh, and he says, but against principalities. Oh, Lord, the whole thing is coming at you. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand.
stand in the evil day. Amen. This is an evil day Amen. when principalities and powers, mm -hmm. rulers of the darkness of this world, come at you. Amen. And when it come at you, it'll make you believe something that you're not. Mm -hmm. You're Superman. You can fly. <laughs> mean I can fly? Yeah, you can fly. Jesus. Selfie. Go on up to the top of that building there and jump off. Jesus. And, I, and I'll help you too. Oh, you will? Oh, okay. <laughs> now that's, that's people talking to themselves. <laughs> and so he goes up to the highest building. He leaps off. And you all know what, what happened after that. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, take, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, I'm going to tell you how to stand it. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth. Have we gotten through it yet? How much more do we need to know? Can we read one book in the Bible and say we got it? No. Having your, having girded your waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Because the devil's going to try to attack you right at the heart. Some of us have gotten broken hearts because of relationships. Oh, I'm going to commit suicide. I love her or him so much so. If I can't have them, I don't know. I just want to end it. And so the devil said, you go ahead on, boo. <laughs> but you got to gird this up. Why? Because this organ here, is very important. This organ is a spring of the blood flow within your life. If you impede that spring of the blood flow within your life, you die. Come in. Put the breastplate on. Over your chest. The breastplate of righteousness. I'm going to live right because I got who in my life? Jesus. The Spirit of God in my life. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Much as wide within you, live peaceably with all being. That's how you learn to keep your mouth closed. Because sometimes you can say things that will infuriate people. You gotta learn to keep this baby. You gotta learn to control this baby. Before you know it, you say something that will offend somebody. And before you know it, while you're standing there offending somebody, then I went upside to you. <laughs> well, man. <laughs> Lord, help us in this place. Help the gospel of peace. Somebody preach it to somebody in here that need to hear it. Who needs it? Well, nobody's raising your hand. All of us. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to do what? Quince all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation. Do what with it? And the sword of the Spirit of God, which is the Word. Pray always with all prayer and supplication.
in the Spirit. How do you get there? He tells us to pray in the Spirit of God. Yeah. Don't just say anything. Pray in the Spirit of God. Be watchful to this evil. And with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. Remember all of us. All of us need. And that mind that's within us will link us together and empower the whole congregation to do great works for God. But unless we now get there, we'll become weakened by those and whom don't really believe. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Let's go back. Let's go back. And so, these are things that we should know. But then he makes mention of something else. Uh, that we should know. In verse 20, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long suffering waited uh, in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved through the Lord. There's also an anti-type which now saves us. And there you cover that baptism. You cover it. And then this thought is, now the removal of the filth of the flesh, or it's not the removal of the flesh, filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. I want to have my mind now right with God. And this should be all, uh, all of us should want a right mind to serve God. Quickly, I think I can read through this quickly. I want you to flip over because it's Good for you. Look over to Genesis chapter 6. Verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men. The sons of God so the daughters of men, this is now mixing the corruptible with the incorruptible. That's why we have problems in the church. Because we mix the incorruptible with the corruptible. Notice that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, verse 2, that they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose, getting themselves in trouble. And the Lord said, My spirit, what? Shall not strive with man. For he is indeed turned back to the flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterwards when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men and they bore children up to them. Those, uh, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness
wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he, he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will what? Destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But no more found grace. This is what we're striving for. Just as sure as the word of God is true, the earth is going to pass away with a fervent heat and a great explosion. Then what's going to come down? A new heaven and a new earth. We're going to see these. That's in Revelation. The Word of God tells us that we're in the last days. And what does that mean? There is nobody else coming. Jesus Christ, the high priest, is in. Either you believe him or die. Can I get an amen again? Amen. Amen. If you have said thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, man. This is the generation, the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked in uh, with God. Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jacob. The earth was, uh, earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with what? Violence. Are we going to this point now? Amen. Amen. Are we in this in this mode now? Yes. In this mode. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. All flesh had what? Corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, as also he did to his son, the end of all flesh has come before <clears> you. <throat> Not the end, because there will be some that say, like Noah. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark. Go for wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside. Skipping down, chapter 77. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come in to the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven, and he goes through. And so what we're saying, this is the anti-time of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What we're saying now, as we go back to wrap this up, and I have to continue on at another time, there is also an anti-time which now saves us, and then he puts it. Baptism, you see. You see. Not the removal of, of, the, of the filth of the flesh, but the answer to all conscience, our conscience toward God. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there he is, he was lifted up, who has gone into heaven, he rose the third day, went into heaven to present the blood to the Father. Jesus. To now, what did he do in heaven? Heaven was cleansed because the devil was cast out. That's in chapter 12 of Revelations. Who has gone into heaven he is at the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers have been given, uh, been made subject to him. So we see, 
as we move forward, now we have a base, a foundation to move through chapter four. Because chapter four now is going to bring in all of the summations of what you have had, of what you have read through, and what you have come to know. You write those scriptures down and you study those scriptures so that now you will start to understand what it means for you to be saved. This is not a hoax. It's not something that man has thought up uh, to more or less now uh, be different. It is the word of God. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to be saved. What do you mean? You've got to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. And God will fill you with his spirit. Now, you will now start to progress to progress toward being spiritual. And that's another state now that we know that you have to progress to. Uh, and that's to be spiritual. We haven't really been studying how to be spiritual, but we will. And so what I say, what I'm saying to you all is that Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If this word has encouraged you, if this word has inspired you, if this word has lifted you up, then we want you to visit us on our social media channels today. There you can learn how to submit a prayer request, learn more about our upcoming events. Also, you can partner with us and sow a seed. There are three ways to give. You can send a financial blessing uh, through the mail to the church. Donate on Cash App today using dollar sign bless, capital G, capital E, capital T. Or you can send a blessing to Greater Ecclesia through PayPal. And now, here are your announcements.